the average age of a millionaire in the United States is 59 years old. And so if you want to get there faster, you're going to have to do something different than what they're doing. Most of them hit that solid milestone of a million dollars by the time they hit retirement age because they were diligent in investing in a very safe ETF for index fund like the S&P 500, which I 100% definitely recommend. And that's what I'm investing in very heavily myself. But I know some of you are looking to get there within 10 years, maybe 20 years. And so that's what this video is all about. Investing $500 per month for 40 years in the S&P 500 will hopefully bring you over $2.5 million at retirement age. The way to be able to get that money faster is going to be to invest more into the S&P 500 or safe ETFs, or picking at least one risky thing to invest in with with a small portion of your portfolio and hoping that thing goes to the moon. Today we're in one of the classrooms that I actually teach in because in this video you are sure to learn something. Each of these three risky investments that I'm going to talk about today have the potential to 10x that what you would get in the S&P 500. But be warned, because with higher reward comes higher risk. And so I want you to make sure and promise me that you will go out and you will do much more research before ever putting any money into any of these investments. Now for this video, I'm going to give you three risky investment categories, and within each category, I'm going to give you two options a more risky option within that and a less risky option within that. So you can go ahead and choose your path. I'm also gonna give you further literature and resources. And as you know, I'm Professor G and on this channel, I make investing simplified. Now, first off, JD made a very solid point that I wanna highlight. For those of you that are a little bit younger, partaking in something with a little more risk is definitely a little more appealing for you because you have time to make that up. Let's say your entire risky investment goes down to zero, but you're only 25 years old. You're at a point where you're still able-bodied, you're full of energy, and you can just go out there and make some more money. It always hurts to lose money, but it would definitely hurt more if you were like 65 years old and you're counting on that money to survive. And the last thing that I want you to question, especially if you're younger, is what the heck kind of music are you guys listening to these days? She tried to hit me with the shh because I was all right, now that we got that out of the way, let's go with category number one, which is real estate. Now, real estate to me in general is actually a pretty safe investment, knowing that it's an actual physical asset. There's only so much land, and so I do think that real estate is a very smart move. But the thing that does make it so risky is that it's such a high upfront cost. When you're buying a stock or two, you're paying $100 or $200. When you're buying a house, you're putting down $50,000. Now, for this category, when I talk about real estate, I'm talking about a property that's going to make you money, not your home that you're going to be living in. Real estate is a great thing to add to the S&P 500 because now you're diversifying into an actual tangible asset which is different than equities or stocks. With real estate, you can make money in so many ways including flipping or selling the house, renting or cash flow, and even tax benefits. Real estate on average appreciates 4-6% to per year in the United States and rent has also increased about 4% per year. So just a side note, if you're renting like at an apartment right now, and your rent goes up about 4%, when you go and get your average raise of 2% each year, you're actually losing money because now your rent is even more expensive. When you own the home, the mortgage never goes up, but the value of the house does. And then with rent rates rising, that means you can charge more, which means that you make more cash flow each month as well. So the riskiest way is to buy a single family residence and turn it into a rental. The upfront cost is going to be intense. This will likely be anywhere from $10,000 to $100,000 depending on what type of house you're buying and where. Then there's risk of things going wrong with the house and things that you didn't see during an inspection. Like right now on my latest rental property, the inspection came back totally fine but as soon as we went to use the hot water, a pipe burst underneath the house and that hasn't been fun. But that's showbiz, baby. We were ready for the risk when we took on this investment. Still not fun though. Then there's also the risk of the tenants. It could be destructive and mess stuff up in your house. They could also just not pay on time or not pay at all. 
Dealing with people isn't the best thing in the world. The reward is definitely there though, because if all goes according to plan, you'll have tenants in there that are paying off your mortgage and probably some extra so you'll have cash flow in your pocket each month while the value of the house goes up and getting tax benefits. Now the less risky way to be able to do this is to do something called house hacking. And this has been very famous on YouTube and TikTok. And it's such a good idea, especially for those of you that are younger, but really anybody can do this. And this is where you just buy a house or a duplex or something that you're going to live in and then you rent out the rooms or you rent out the other side of the house. This is such a great idea and a great way for you to get into real estate because now your roommates are paying off your mortgage for you, which is giving you equity in your home. You're probably able to have your living expenses totally paid for so you don't have that line item as an expense every month. I would definitely suggest that everybody look into house hacking. Now for further education, I recommend two places. First is Bigger Pockets. They have an awesome website, podcast, Instagram, pretty much anything that you wanna learn about real estate in any way. These guys have definitely figured it out and I love to just click around on their website or listen to their podcasts. The second option would be to follow Rob Bilt, specifically if you wanna learn about short-term rentals and Airbnb. And now after I explain explain each of these three categories of risky investments, I'm going to share with you how I'm going to be investing in 2023 in these. So make sure to stick around to the end for that. Now the next category is cryptocurrency and I'm sure that I'm about to get roasted in the comment section, but just hear me out. I am educated and more importantly, I'm an educator and I take it my responsibility to make sure that I don't lead people astray. And I know that this is a hot topic right now and so I take it very, very seriously and so I'm going to explain how I personally invest and what I think you should do to really learn about this asset class. Remember that the goal of this video presupposes that you are already investing in something very, very safe like the S&P 500 or SCHD or something like that. And so the goal here is to add a little bit of risk, a small portion of risk. And this asset class definitely clicks that box. For this, I like to think of the 1990s when people were on the fence about if the internet would be valuable or not. No one likes change, and during change and new technology, the kinks need to get worked out, and I think that's what we're seeing right now. Now, especially with crypto, there's definitely going to be more risky and less risky, and I 100% only suggest going with the less risky option here. I personally would never even touch the more risky one that I'll explain. And so as far as the more a risky option. I would be to go with almost the penny stock of crypto and just go with a coin or project that's very new and usually less than one cent to buy and it promises of making it to a dollar or ten dollars. Any investment but especially with crypto make sure that you research the heck out of that project and even the technology as a macro because soon you'll see that most of these projects aren't worth a bag of Cheetos and so you shouldn't be wasting your time on them. Anything under the top 30 coins on coin market cap you should be very skeptical. Now the less risky option would be Bitcoin and Ethereum and pretty much just Bitcoin. Now I'm not going to try to convince you to jump into Bitcoin, but what I am going to try to convince you to do is to read this book here, even if you have no desire to ever invest in Bitcoin ever. I learned more about money and economics and the way that the financial system works from this book alone. And I don't get a commission for selling that book, but I do like to recommend it, especially in my classes because it's the most comprehensive book on the actual technology of what blockchain is and how Bitcoin can be such a valuable asset. It also does an amazing job of explaining why we have such high inflation right now and predicting where our dollar might be within the next 10, 20, or 30 years. So as investors, we definitely need to pay attention to this. I've read Bitcoin Evangelism two times and both times I learned more things than I can count and most of them had nothing to do with Bitcoin. Once you understand the financial system and see what Bitcoin has done to actually preserve the value of money and gives you power rather than our government taking it, you'll start to see why Bitcoin as an ideology is important. 
Now there are so many reasons why I personally invest in Bitcoin, but the number one to me is its absolute scarcity. There's ever only going to be 21 million Bitcoin. There could never be any more. And currently there's twice as many millionaires as there are Bitcoin, which means that if each millionaire wanted to own one Bitcoin, they couldn't do it. To me as a business professor, I'm all about supply and demand and understanding why something has value and when something is as truly scarce as that, I'm definitely paying attention. Having a bunch of fiat dollars is cool until the government decides to just print a whole bunch more money and now your money's worth less and then we see this crazy inflation. That happened just last year and this could never happen with Bitcoin. Now as far as resources, definitely check out the Bitcoin Evangelism book by Brian DeMint with the link down in my description below. And then the next resource is coinmarketcap.com. There you can research all the coins and everything you need to know will be there. All right, that third category is growth stock. The whole idea of a growth company stock or ETF is that you're paying a premium now for something that you believe will have way more value later on. Think about investing in Tesla when we didn't know if the electric vehicle concept would really catch on, or investing in Amazon back when the internet was still new and most people shopped at malls instead so they didn't understand the need for an online marketplace. The riskier option is definitely going to be to invest in an individual company stock. If you get it right, it's gonna change the trajectory of your life financially forever. These are the types of stocks that can go up 1000% in one year. These are also the types of stocks that could go down all the way to zero and just totally die out. In 2022, AMD dropped 50%, Tesla's dropped 60%, and Meta's dropped over 64%. A less risky option is to go with a growth ETF. And overall, ETFs are going to be the less riskier option when investing in stocks, which is why I go so hard on ETFs on this channel. This helps mitigate your risk by having multiple companies stock together in the ETF in order to help fight against any huge losses. These ETFs have crushed it the past 10 years, returning 14 to 15% per year on average, which is insane for an ETF. As far as resources for this, I like to read reputable news sites like nasdaq.com, Yahoo News, CNBC, Bloomberg, and more to research individual companies and even ETFs to figure out which is best. Now, as far as the way that I'm investing this year in these risky categories is that I see a lot of fear in the market. I see a lot of people scared, of course, because everything is down and all of these categories are down even further. So a lot of people are shying away from these and they're going more into value or dividends. And to me, if you can afford it and you're safe, you already have a good portfolio built up or you're building one up as we speak. And right now is the perfect time to be dipping your toe in the water of this risk. Since the bulk of my portfolio is in very safe things like the S&P 500, SCHD, and very strong companies like Berkshire Hathaway, right now I'm actually investing a much heavier portion of my money into these categories. As I talked about before, we just recently purchased our second rental property, and so for real estate, for now, we're good. But I am going to be investing very heavily into a growth ETF like SC HG or VUG, both of those are my favorite, and then also a lot into Bitcoin right now. For most people, I would definitely recommend that you don't go above 20% in these risk categories for your entire portfolio. I think if you're newer to investing, you should definitely start with the growth ETFs because those could pay off big time and they're going to be the least risky out of everything that I've talked about today. And as far as the five best growth ETFs that there are on the market, I already started you off strong by making this video. So do yourself a favor and watch this video now.